Congratulations, Chris. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was. It was 911 caller. Dispatch of the year. Dispatcher of the year. And it was of the year. He won it of the month, but he got it of the year, too. That is really cool. We got a quality bunch of people here, both young and old. I'm proud all the way through. Several years ago, when we followed with East Ridge on the campaigns uh, that they did, uh, we were constantly involved with medical campaigns. And we're going to be doing this one particularly with them because it's going to be back in Granada again. We've leaned more toward just staying focused on that little church that we've been supporting, although East Ridge is continue to do medical campaigns in all different places, occasionally in Panama, most of the time in Nicaragua. And it's a great work. It, it's impressive year after year to watch the people that come to this. Uh, you can't imagine. Uh, the schools or wherever they happen to hold this is primitive at best. When you think of a schoolhouse, think of a, a garage, an old garage with brick buildings and concrete floors and mud and crud and windows kind of broken here and there. And you're not too sure if you really want to go into the bathroom of the garage. You're close to imagining what the schoolhouses are like. Uh, they had a regulation one year for all of us in this one campaign when you were staying in the school, how am I going to go about this in a nice way? Uh, you couldn't flush the toilet unless it was really necessary. Just, so if, if it wasn't really necessary, you just left whatever there, okay? Because they were so short of water. The number of people, however, that show up, that want to come, are in the thousands. In, in a four to five day period of time, usually about 2,500 people come in. If they're lucky, there's a chain link fence that'll surround the school area, kind of to build a little bit of protection, because what you want to do is have the people come in through the gate, one by one, as they've lined up for, and, and be able to enter in, in in an organized fashion. But what most of the time happens is the crowds start pressing against the, the chain link fences. And I have pictures of people where their bodies are being mashed into the chain link and the muscle part is protruding through the opposite side. Of course, there's a little extra muscle or whatever in there too. But, you know, the crowds are crushing to get in. I keep uh, this little note on my desk. I, I found my desk today, by the way. I cleaned all the papers and organized the books. and It's still there. It was really neat. It was so amazing. And, and I got down to the glass, and underneath the glass I had tucked a variety of things, and this is one of them. It's a little note, a ticket. It says admit one, much like you get at some little fair or whatever. And one year we used those. And it was handy because they couldn't, people in line, fake it and show up and say, I already... I got this and I had to step out of line so they couldn't write a different number. They, only, they had to have this. This was priceless. This ordinary faded admit one ticket. What it meant was that whoever had this could get in and see a true doctor, well trained, go through the pharmacy and get all the prescriptions, antibiotics, uh, vitamins, worm medicine, yeah, they are, everybody got that. All that they needed. And then they could go to another station and they would be given free used clothes that we'd taken down there in duffel bags. And another station, they would get a small bag of rice and a small bag of beans. And each person would get that and take it home with them. And they literally fought over Admit One tickets. We are blessed. And I just pull that out and have it in there as my reminder how blessed we are. I don't have to line up in front of the chain link fence 
to get food, our clothes. I, I'm blessed. And if, if I ran out, I've got thousands of people I could call at the drop of a hat. If I hit some kind of tragedy and I needed $100,000, I'll bet you in 30 minutes' time I'm making a phone call here and there. Now, I'm talking about real necessary things. I'd get people to cough it up. Gladly. So I know people that are blessed, and I'm blessed. But above all, as the people of God, Romans chapter 8 gives us a list of blessings that beyond getting in a chain link fence to see doctors, or beyond having a good job, an automobile that runs good, a home, and you may not have one yet, some of you just got one, some of you had some, and some of you are headed there to have one someday. All of that in your dream, and, and all very accomplishable. But beyond that, Romans 8 verse 1 says, There therefore is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. He's talking about us as Christians. And the fact that we were condemned by our sins. And now as Christians, it's, it's wiped out. It's like everything you had in your past is not only forgiven, but it's erased. It's gone. Nobody can point a finger anymore. And you know what I'm talking about for you personally. In verse 14 of that same chapter, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again uh, to be afraid or to be fearful, but you received a spirit of adoption by whom we can cry out, Abba, Father, Dad, Father. Now I'm more into understanding this, this nifty thing called adoption because... My daughter's adopted a little boy, precious two-year-old. And that idea of where he would be today if it wasn't for adoption just blows my mind. I, I look at the little kids in Nicaragua every time I'm there. I get up early in the morning. I jog basically down through a barren walk street because it Seven in the morning, there's nobody out buying anything at that time of the day. But there are a few people headed to work or to school. And in addition to that, there are four or five kids along the way under doorsteps. They've slept there over the night. No home to go to. Could be five years old, could be 14. They sleep in their ragged clothes, and a lot of times they will take their flip-flops that are just about worn to a frazzle, and they would tuck them up inside their hands and be sleeping like this so they wouldn't lose them during the night. Now, they're not worth much, obviously. But it's all they've got. That's probably where my tail would be. Or something close to that. If it wasn't for adoption. And God, in all of His love, looks down at us and says, I want, I want all of you in my family. And he says, admit one. One more. And you're the one more. And how blessed we are. So I just want you to leave tonight thinking during this holiday time that it doesn't always lend itself to the neatest things. Although everybody's got on this beautiful smile, there's lots of glitter and lights and whatever. We get admitted. We get to walk inside those gates. And there's nobody that can take that away from us. If you're a Christian. So are, are you, back to verse 1, in Christ Jesus, that's where the, the condemnation line cuts. Baptized into Christ, Romans 6, 1. Belonging to Him. You get your sin washed away.
and then living like you should. Perfect not. We're not going to handle that, but you ought to walk like a child of God. And we know the difference. You know the difference. So we close our devotional tonight with a praise to God because He's admitted us. And an opportunity if you've fallen short in any way to get into the group or get back. But get one. Do you need to come? Come understand the same. Thing.